Wherever that you see the jet chemtrails go over, you're going to get aluminum barium strontium coming down on you. Why would we not believe it's happening when what we see in the sky matches exactly the express goal of numerous geoengineering patents, about 160 or more? Why would we not believe this is happening when every element showing up in the rain tests are the primary elements named in those geoengineering patents? Why would we not believe this is happening when we have escalating levels in very sh short time frames, as, much, as short as five years, we see rain levels of aluminum, for example, escalating as much as 50,000%. California air quality studies do not show these metals migrating from China. And it's of recent origin, so you know this bombardment of heavy metals that's raining down on us is, is coming from somewhere. Why would we not believe geoengineering is occurring when the weather patterns are so altered here in exactly the manner stated by geoengineers and reports on the consequences for geoengineering, which are diminished rainfall, which are increased ozone destruction. We have a massive ozone hole in the northern hemisphere now. It's typical every day. You, when we see these silvery white skies toward the horizon in the morning in, in the east, in the afternoon in the west, skies should be blue, not silvery white. And the bottom line is even when you don't see the horizon to horizon trails, we are absolutely still being sprayed. When you see even the shorter, bright trails, still aerosol disbursement. I challenge anybody, look at the high bypass turbofan jet engine, which is all tankers and all commercial carriers. 80% of the air that passes through that engine is non-combusted. That engine by design is almost incapable of making any type of trail. So when you see the silvery white skies still being sprayed, the horizon to horizon trails are the tip of the iceberg for these programs. We have highly transparent nanoparticles. They have a refraction that is four times higher than the one of diamonds. That, um, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you can read there that they are valid for uh, scalar applications, that they can be used in um, um, applications utilizing time reverse uh, field structures. It is a set of physics that is not in the public domain. It's scalar physics. But even in Wikipedia, it is mentioned as one of the particles that can has the ability to handle and process scalar waves. Let's put it this way. Maybe it's the easiest. Um, this is the reason for the plant death because the, tra the crystal is highly transparent, but it absorbs UV light. At 260 nanometer wavelength, it is 100% opaque, absorbing UV signals. And this is exactly the frequency where the plants are processing the cell, div cell division impulse. Cell division occurs if a UV biophoton is hitting a cell. This is kind of the trigger to tell the cell, please divide into two. And if you have these particles within the plant tissue, you absorb all the cell division signals, and the plant stops growing. Um, this is actually the thing that caused uh, mad cow disease in the 80s. If you look exactly at the um, um, medical research concerning mad cow, cow disease, um, you find that um, there are three reasons to get this disease a lack of copper within the body, too much mercury in the body, and these nanocrystals. And what happens then is that the mercury is stripping the nervous system, destroying the protective layers on the nerves. The copper, the lack of copper in the body makes the, the single nerves dissolve into chain parts. It's a protein, a prion, and a copper, protein, prion, copper. If you suck out the copper, it falls into pieces. This is how they can diagnose BSE, a TSE, um, by measuring these uh, protein, prion particles. And then something very interesting happens. Uh, they, these these uh, um, protein prion things try to rebuild the nervous system. It is a self-healing process of the body. But if you don't have copper, you cannot rebuild the nervous system. So the, co the body is taking the next heavy metals it can access, and this is barium and strontium. So it starts building a nervous system that is based on protein prion barium. And this is um, 
kind of an antenna for electric man, electromagnetic fields. So you, we are rebuilding a nervous system that is sensitive on electromagnetic fields. And not only that the nerve itself becomes sensitive, also the barium strontium titanate nanocrystals, they display barium and strontium on their surface from the crystalline structure, and the new built nerves kind of grow onto the crystal. So what you get is a new connecting point for the nervous system that is piezoelectric. And whenever this is receiving a signal, it's fire firing electrons. So you have a direct access to the nervous system of the human being. This is one nanobot that you can find in the literature. Nobody knows that it is 100% identical with TSE with the mad cow disease and with the Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. This is a forced partnership between us and them. This is how we will be eternally owned by them. This is how they can push our biology from Homo sapien to Homo evolutus without our having a say in it. For now, engineered technology in all living things is a secret. But one day we may be charged with unlawful possession of something that has become a part of us that we cannot get rid of.